There are over 3 billion women in the world, all different, unique, individually created from hundreds of nationalities, cultures and countries. Different languages, backgrounds, religions, beliefs, personalities and attitudes. But despite these differences, each one in her very essence has the jewel of femininity deeply planted in her heart. And each woman throughout her life is on a journey to discover this, to be who she is called to be, to be the best she can and to ultimately find the reason why she exists. Each one of these women has been created with love, with purpose and with great dignity. What is this term femininity that hundreds of philosophers, scientists, theologians over centuries have tried to interpret, discover and understand? What does it mean to be a woman? What is God's intended purpose for women? What does the feminine genius mean? I'm Therese Nichols and welcome to Catholic Focus. To understand what true femininity is, what true authentic beauty is, what the feminine genius is, allows us to understand God's purpose for our lives. It opens up a door to receiving Christ's great love for us, therefore inspiring and encouraging us to radiate this love and our God-given gifts to all. As St. Catherine of Siena said, if we are who we are meant to be, we will set the world on fire. When we truly understand that we are a daughter of God, we become who we are created to be. 20 years have passed by since Pope John Paul II introduced the world to a whole new version of the feminine mystique, malarius dignitatum, which means on the dignity and vocation of women. What has come to be known as the feminine genius is something the world is still trying to unpack. So to, to discuss this very important topic, I have in the studio with me Mary Rose Bacani and Alicia Ambrosio. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So Mary Rose, what does the feminine genius mean to you? Well, first of all, I wanted to say that we're, I feel really honored that you chose the two of us to talk about authentic beauty and feminism. And this is a topic that's really hard to even um, verbalize, even in the Pope's document. It's not directly said what feminine genius is. So if I could just say a few thoughts about it, it's um, one thing he said was, it's the power that we have or the potential that we have to inject love into the world. And that's something that we have because of our connection, very deep connection to human life in, in our womb. But we have that potential to be physical mothers and our spiritual motherhood comes before that. So I think that would be one of the first things I would say, is that ability to, to nurture, nourish life and love and inject it, give it out to the world. To be ambassadors of that's love. Right. That's mm. right. Well, I think a feminine genius, to me that term, it just encompasses a lot of what I would call the intangible gifts, the intangible, yeah, the intangible gifts of being woman. And I think that means a lot of the, um, the innate, the kind of the female innate ability to tune into a whole other level of life, to be able to go beyond um, appearances and to be able to be, go beyond the physical world and understand things on a different level, on a gut level. Um, to be able to kind of pick up on uh, what's going on with the people we have before us, what's going on with the people that we're working with, um, you know, pick up the kind of the, the subtle shadings of life. Um, also, when I hear the term feminine genius, I can't help but think of a classmate I had back in university, and this, this was a young woman from China, and I went to a university out west in Western Canada that's very liberal, um, and so there was a, a large population of feminists on this campus and what this classmate of mine from China, she was an exchange student, what she pointed out to us one day is that she was shocked that the feminists in Canada seemed to be trying to become men. They wanted to be the same as men and she said that back home women were fighting just to be recognized as equal but not to become like men and to me I think that's part of the genius uh, the feminine genius it's this intangible set of gifts we have that makes us 
equal to men, but different. Mm. And it's funny you say that because earlier we spoke to Sister Mary Peter, a Nashville Dominican nun, who's also a lawyer, and she was saying a similar thing. So let's hear what she has to say. I, I think that in many ways the desire of women to be recognized as equal to men today is grounded in a false premise. It's grounded on the, in the premise that it's what we do that matters, it's what we do that makes us equal, and that there's no difference at all between men and women. And that's just simply not true. Um, there really is a difference between men and women, between the gifts that are inherent in each of us and the w giftedness that God calls on us to bring to the world. And so for many, I think the challenge is to recognize equal dignity doesn't mean total lack of distinction at all. To promote the culture of the feminine genius, I think we need to help teach girls starting when they're very young what their dignity is grounded in and to reinforce that as time goes on. So we've just heard from Sister Mary Peter saying that women and men are both equal but different. What do you feel that are the unique qualities and gifts that women possess to offer the world? Um, I don't think it's uh, any coincidence that most babies or kids know their mom first. There's something about that connection that was physical in the womb and, and they see that their mom is the one who feeds them and nurtures them. The dad is there in those beginning stages. But that, I think that's an indication of what we possess within us, right? We have that connection, so we're, we're there to nurture, mm. to heal. Anything to do with human relationships, we're there. And there's um, a saying in the Philippines, something with like, the woman is the heart of the home. The man, if he's the one who's working, he goes home and he wants to rest. He finds rest and peace with his wife, or he should. There should be that mm. relationship where the woman in sort of being um, interiorly at peace, being one with God, having that silence in her heart that her own, I think she's a sanctuary in a way, the Holy Father brings that up as well in his, mm. in his document. If she's a sanctuary of peace, which she has in her power and in her being to be, then anybody in her presence would find a sort of healing or they would say, there's something about that woman, not because of what she's doing, but the way she is. And that's a gift that we have, I think. It's that feminine genius of we, we're capable of doing that, but we're, if we're obsessed with, let's do this, let's accomplish these things, and that being a sign of our, our success, mm. then the very difficult and very important task that we have of being internally um, at peace, be, having within us that love of God that we radiate that to the world, um, we can't build the civilization of love without that. So I think, you know, just those thoughts. On so it's more, more about being than doing. Yes, mm. for sure. Unless you give, and that's what the Holy Father says, unless you make up yourself a gift, women will never find complete fulfillment and happiness. And that's hard to describe to a lot of people, even to men, that we could find fulfillment in jest. Yeah. yeah. Now know, nobody hears about that. There's this wonderful book called The Authentic Catholic Woman. The author is Genevieve Kinky, and we actually interviewed her earlier this week. So perhaps we'll talk to Genevieve now and find out what she thinks the feminine genius is all about. The feminine genius, which is a phrase that is used by John Paul II, is very rich in its connotation because it says that there's something particular about women, their gift to the world that is different than the gift that is encompassed by the world of men. And in this I find it twofold. First and foremost, as an icon of the church, the feminine genius asks a woman to be a sanctuary, a sanctuary for the human person in which he can thrive. And that brings us to the second point, if a woman is living the feminine genius in her own unique way, the souls around her will be uh, richer, they will unfold, as, to use the phrase of Edith Stein, they will find their best selves by being in her presence. Similarly, the way that a person would find his best self in a church. And she is a walking, living, breathing icon of the church. It's a beautiful opportunity to live the love of God. The heart of the vocation of the mission of woman is centered in all vocations, as all vocations are, in the Eucharist. And the gift of Christ, which was to the last drop of his blood in love, we take that to ourselves. The church in particular was born from the side of Christ as his last gift to the world. And in living as an icon of the bride, we have to pour out every ounce of our energy as a gift of ourself to the world. 
that Eucharistic heart of Jesus should be reflected in the, in the heart of women. And the beauty of the writing of John Paul II in Mulieris Dignitatum shows us that women are to be ambassadors of love. That is the essence of this. The Eucharistic heart of Jesus shows us how to love, and then we receive this love in order to give it back to the world and to bear fruit for the greater kingdom of God. Unfortunately, however, throughout history, we have distorted, crushed, confused, and undervalued the true essence of femininity and the treasure of women. For example, just look at how women are portrayed in television and marketing. So I wanted to ask you both what you think are the main challenges and obstacles that women face in living out their true authentic femininity in this day and age. Well, I think, and I, I touched on it earlier, but I think one of the biggest challenges is the North American concept of feminism. Um, there is this belief that if you're not trying to break a glass ceiling, if you're not trying to push farther and go higher and do more of exactly what your male counterparts have done, if you're not trying to prove a point to the men in, your, in the world that you're not, you're not doing everything you could be doing as a woman. Um, we're not quite in that situation anymore where you're only really doing your role as a woman if you're having children and raising a family, but we've also gone, we've gone too far in the other direction. If we're not trying to become men, we're not you know, being authentic females, we're not being authentic women. I think that's the biggest challenge. So um, we're in a situation where if you're trying to balance the two, if you're trying to have it all, if you're trying to have the things that matter, if you're trying to have the things that respond to the desires of the heart and the desires of the soul, sometimes at the expense of material success, um, there is a perception in the world that you're not doing everything you could mm -hmm. as to, to be fully woman, to yes. be a fully modern woman. So that's one of the ways to overcome those obstacles and challenges that we might ask Genevieve to speak about now. I think two of the challenges that women face today are the material culture in which we live and this um, attempt to attain perfection, which none of us are ever going to have. I think that a lot of times that they see femininity as a weakness. Feminists from the very earliest days saw motherhood as a means of shackling them and oppressing them and keeping them out of the public sphere where they thought all the important decisions were being made. I think that there has been uh, a growth in the last 10 years about the appreciation for motherhood and, and a greater appreciation for the gift of life that women have. We have to remember that the Blessed Mother received Christ in her heart before she received him in her womb. Spiritual mother precedes physical motherhood and it's something to which all women are called whether they ever bear physical children or not. We're all called to spiritual motherhood. And a lot of this is belittled or eradicated by the claims of feminism which says, which says that motherhood is slavery, it's an oblation of self, you'll never get ahead, and the accolades of the world um, are more important than your motherhood. And so this is a very confusing world in which young women are raised. Um, the sexual revolution obviously has belittled women. It has uh, object objectified them and uh, reduced intimacy between man and woman to just a utilitarian pastime. And so when a woman becomes an object of uh, this sort of attention, she's not ever gonna find peace. She can't give herself because there's no one to receive her and to respond in kind. And so the sexual revolution has very much demeaned women and they try to be taken seriously and they end up being sexual objects instead. That's very sad. The challenge to femininity is sometimes um, this mis misunderstanding that to be feminine is an agenda or a plan or action or a list of to-dos. The essence of femininity is being, not doing. You are a sanctuary. You are an icon of Holy Mother Church. And if you understand who you are, you will radiate that truth to the world before you even open up your mouth. I think one of the other challenges that we have is that we go to the other extreme where society views the church's teaching on the feminine genius as mothers nursing babies all day at home 
and not seeing that women who are in the workforce and um, out there doing different things up until they could be single for the rest of their life or 80 can still and are still feminine geniuses. So I think it's important that we get that balance. Well, I think that's, again, that comes from focusing on, like Mary Rose was saying, what you can see. So it's easy to see a family. So you, mm -hmm. you can quantify it in that way, but it's an intangible. It's about being. It's like that quote you, you gave us, when you, when you are what, who you were meant to be, you'll set the world on fire. Well, what is it I'm meant to be? Who am I meant to be? Um, I think I, sh I should probably speak here <laughs> as the single woman on staff. Um, it's... it's I know that I'm meant to tell people stories. I know that I am meant to um, give, give signs of hope through what I do, through the articles I write, through the shows I produce. That doesn't make, that makes me just as much possessive of the feminine genius because I am being who I'm meant to be and I'm mm. listening, I'm tuning into those intangible things and understanding who I'm supposed to be and doing it, being it. And I, I would add that you're giving, right? You're Mm -hmm. doing something to serve, to serve other people, to give that love. So right. people received your love through the television or through your articles. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they haven't met you physically, but it's not about the physical again, right? It's about mm. sharing, um, giving of uh, whatever love there is in you. Uh, you know, I had the chance to work in a, in a major news organization overseas, and I was replacing a woman who was on maternity leave with her second child. And whereas in some circles, once you have the first child, that kind of means you wind down your work life. This woman that I met, she, she just couldn't bring herself to give up her work life because it was part of who she is supposed to be. It was a vocation. Her, her role as a journalist, she saw being a journalist as a vocation, and she would be less of a woman if she gave up her journalism just to be a mother. And I think you need both. I think mm -hmm. that's to fully possess the, f the feminine genius, you need to be aware that it's not either or. It's mm -hmm. not, it can't be defined by one thing. It's about understanding who you're supposed to be. Yeah, but at and the same I time, if you have a journalist, let's mm -hmm. say, who wants to be a journalist for life and doesn't want to settle down because they like the prestige, mm -hmm. they like the career, they well, like, that's a totally then that's story. different, it's not a, you know, it's, it's a service in a way that ends up being a service to self. It's you self like those other things, but it's, yeah. in the end, if you really look at it deep enough, it's self-serving. But mm -hmm. if you have the journalist, you know, who's a journalist for life as well, meaning, you know, um, not getting married, single for life as a journalist, but then they know that that's how they're called to serve, that somehow God is saying, I need you to do this, mm -hmm. then that is totally, um, a service for, for, for the world that is directed in the right way. And I think that goes back to what the heart of the feminine genius is, and that is service to God, therefore service to the world. And it's when we pursue the heart of Christ, and when we have a we're in relationship with Him, and we long to do His will, then I think that brings out the true glory of womanhood, when they are united to the heart of Christ. And, um, well, the Holy Father mentioned that too. If it has to be sacramental as well, um, and some of the women that we, we heard about, that we heard from, mm. that you can, um, you know what you're supposed to give by being close to Christ and His church and His mother, yeah. because that's how you know. I mean, Mary was a single, well, she was a virgin with a child. So in that way, she shows to us what it means to love as a virgin. So how for Mary is, she a, how is she a role model for both of you? Um, a woman who lived 2,000 years ago, who was perfect without sin, how can we relate to her in this day and age? Um, one thing I would say is when she, whatever she was doing at the time when the angel talked to her, or the angel announced to her, or asked her if she could be the mother of God, what was important, I think, was the fact that she was able to hear that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if it was a vision that the angel appeared and talked so loudly, or I don't know. Who knows? Mm. But the fact that she was in tune with, with God is what we can learn from. You know, like I could be working in media and it's go, 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 crazy, crazy, crazy. But I take that time to pray, to, to listen, and mm. am I on the right track? How am I doing? You know, it's not just about my plans, mm -hmm. but about God. Um, I think that's one thing I really get from her. No matter what she was doing, she mm. had that connection with God. Mm. Um, and the other one was she replied, behold the handmaid of the Lord. Meaning that I'm aware, whatever you're asking me, that I am a creature 
uh, in your plan and you have a purpose for me mm -hmm. that's bigger than me. Mm -hmm. So I think in that way, to, to, those are the two things I take from her. And, um, what about I think you, really Lucia? Yeah, the, um, the, the abandonment, the yes, behold the handmaid of the Lord, just the faith, faithful abandonment, it made mm. no sense. Like she was 15 years old, unmarried, and she's going to have a child not just any child, she's going to have God's child. You know, this makes absolutely no sense and her ability to just completely abandon herself to that and say, you know, do with me what you will. I'm here, do with me what you will. Um, and I like to picture, because we're often told that she was this young girl just going about her daily chores when the angel Gabriel descended and I like to picture just that, that humble little cave you know, it was nothing spectacular, nothing grand, and it makes me think of, you know, my own upbringing, and it was a simple home, nothing spectacular, nothing extravagant, middle of the road family, and it instills in you a certain set of values and a certain set of desires, and you walk through life just wanting to fulfill those desires, just thirsting to have those desires filled, and then things come along, and you just kind of say, okay, your will be done, you know, okay, you want me to go to Rome for three years, your will be done, you want me to move to Toronto, okay. So I think um, a beautiful way to be able to live out the feminine genius in this day and age with the obstacles and challenges that all women face is to look at Mary as our role model, as our inspiration, and stay close to the sacraments, as you were saying, Mary Rose, and to look to God to lead us, and when our hearts are in tune with Christ, we will truly be the women that we're called to be. So thank you both so much for coming in to share with us your thoughts on the feminine genius. We've got two feminine geniuses <laughs> here with us. So thank you for radiating your feminine genius on us in the studio today. And we're going to take a look at a few of the women that we've interviewed today to hear their last words of wisdom. I think the most important things for us to retain from Pope John Paul II's letter about the dignity of women is to realize where our dignity comes from. That it comes from our creation as a female made in the image and likeness of God. Grounded in that, then we take the gifts that are unique to us into the world. I think every generation has its own challenges and of course ours are, are in the realm of human sexuality, misunderstanding of male and female. But the beautiful thing about authentic femininity is that the gift that it offers to the world is nothing other than the love of Christ itself. In our tabernacles, in our sanctuaries, in our presence, God willing, people will find God the Father and a signpost to heaven. I think that's the most important thing. At the heart of the feminine genius is love to give love for no other reason than the fact that each soul deserves nothing less. And it is this that we will build the civilization of love brick by brick, restoring women to their proper dignity and therefore restoring the culture of life. The world is thirsting for women of authentic beauty, heroic, gracious, loving, noble, refined, modest women who abandon self-focused attitudes and focus on the other. We are called to rise up, bringing back an elegance to virtue and using our feminine gifts to serve and bless those around us, transforming the world in our own unique way. The feminine genius calls us to true, gracious living, excelling in hospitality, to shine on the world love, to be socially selfless, sensitive and who honour the dignity of those around us. Women are called to bring out the beauty of souls, of life and all of creation, fostering their capacity to love and receive love in return. Let us continue to reflect on the beautiful apostolic letter, Lares Dignitatum, of our dear John Paul II, to bring the freshness of his sentiments about the dignity of women to a world hungry for hope, love, and the beauty of the feminine genius. If you'd like to order a DVD copy of this program, or would like to share with us your thoughts on this topic, please send us an email Focus at saltandlighttv.org. Once again, for Catholic Focus, I'm your host, Therese Nichols. <laughs>